Hi guys, this is Debbie with Debbie Does Design and today I'm going to show you how to convert an Epson printer into a sublimation printer. The reason why I do the air quotes on convert is it's not really converting per se um, and it's not as complicated as converting sounds. Really all you're doing is you're taking a certain printer because this doesn't work with all printers and you're switching out the manufacturer's ink cartridges with either refillable ink cartridges or a CISS system, which is a continuous ink supply system, uh, one of these. You're either gonna put in one of these things. This is a CISS. Uh, this would plug in where the cartridges go, where you take the manufacturer's cartridges out. And then this would sit outside the printer full of ink and it runs through the hoses into the printer. Or you would use refillable cartridges and tuck them in and replace them for the manufacturer's cartridges of ink. So that's, that's very literally all it is. It's not nearly as complicated as everybody makes it out to sound. So I, I don't even want to call it converting because you're just switching out the ink. Um, now what you put in there is what makes it a sublimation printer, is you have to use sublimation ink, and that's a problem that people do face, is they'll buy ink that they think is sublimation ink. Um, if it's not sublimation ink, it's not going to work. So pigment ink is not the same thing, which is a common thing that you could find available online to put into refillable cartridges. So you need to use sublimation ink, and you have to use refillable cartridges or CISS. Now, I'm not gonna show you the CISS. Um, I actually started with one because I thought I needed to go straight to like the fancy method and I hated it with a fiery passion. <laughs> uh, they get bubbles in the airlines and um, I mean, I don't know why they get them so bad, but my thought process is, and I could be way off on this, but this little thing is inside the printer and as it prints, it flies back and forth 100 miles per hour and shakes the crap out of everything. Your cord is whipping around on the inside and it's kind of tugging on the outside. And um, I feel like that's just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> and I got really sick of messing with it. Um, so I this is the one that I started out with. Um, it's actually pretty full of ink, <laughs> but I, uh, I had issues getting the ink right too. So I ended up switching ink brands and switching to refillable cartridges. So um, I always, just pushing this aside, I always tell people to just get the refillable cartridges. Um, the, the CISS system is just, it's more trouble than it's worth. The cartridges are a lot easier and it's really not a big deal um, refilling. Um, super easy and you don't have to do it that often. I mean, I wanna say that you can get like 100 prints before you have to refill um, the ink, but that very much um, varies depending on what you're printing, what colors you're using, how ink heavy it is, the size. You know, so you're, you can ask all over, and people will tell you different numbers on how many pages you could print um, with one refill, and nobody's gonna give you the same answer. Um, it's just, it's gonna be different. But it lasts a long time, and for the price, it's, it's really not as expensive to do sublimation as people might initially think. So the, the whole process on converting a uh, Epson printer to a sublimation printer, I just woke it up, um, is, is very simple. Um, the first thing you wanna do is you need to set up the printer just as a regular printer first. And I'm not gonna go through all those settings um, to be honest, because this one's already been set up. <laughs> um, but it, it's in the packaging, it tells you what to do. You need to hook it up to your computer. Um, make sure you install the software that comes with it. Um, if your computer does not have a disk drive, go to Epson's website, search for your model number, and look for the all-in-one installer. Uh, if you don't install the software and the drivers, you won't get all the print options that you need. Then you're just going to run into issues later when you're trying to figure out why your colors aren't looking the way you want or whatever and uh, it's almost always because you didn't install the software so if your computer does have a disk drive plug in the disk install everything that it tells you to install um, or go to the website and get the software there um, you also want to 
set it up with the manufacturer's cartridges. Um, I know that some people skip and go straight to the refillable cartridges, and if you do, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, the main reason why um, I recommend, and why you'll see it a lot, why you want to put in the stock cartridges first, is just to make sure that you don't have any problems with the printer. Make sure that it prints okay, it's functioning, it gets all the way to the end of the setup screen, and you don't run into any issues. If you go straight to sublimation, and you run into a problem, then you won't know if it's from the refillable cartridges or if it's from something else you did. So go through the entire setup process of your printer. Um, once you get it to like the main screen and you're, you've got everything installed and working, then you could swap out the cartridges. And this is where people uh, think that there's this big complicated thing you need to do and you really don't have that complicated of a task. Um, I see these printers for sale already converted um, all the time for two, three, four, five hundred dollars. Um, you don't uh, need to spend that much. This is an Epson Workforce 77 or WF 7710. Um, I actually swiped this from a friend who decided she wanted to convert her printer to sublimation. So she bought it and she's been running through the manufacturer's ink just to use the cartridges. And when she was ready to convert it, I came and stole it from her just so I could do this video. Um, my, the printer that I have is a 7720. Uh, the only difference, very literally, the only difference between a 7710 and a 7720 is that the 7720 has a second paper tray underneath. Everything else is the same. Um, I will say that there is some limitations to that second paper tray. I enjoy having it and I use it. I usually keep um, my 13 by 19 paper in the bottom tray and my 8.5 by 11 on the top and those are the two sizes of paper I run and I just make everything work with those. Um, but little disclaimer, there are different print settings that you might want to use for printing different projects, let's say. Um, like fabrics versus mugs, whatever. Um, you're gonna go through, or you should, <laughs> go through a little bit of a, a testing process to see which settings you like best, because it's all going to kind of depend on a lot of variables. Uh, a Mac versus a PC, what software you're printing from, what ink you're using, etc. cetera. Um, the bottom paper tray in the 7720 will not print all paper settings. Some people really like some of those other settings and the bottom paper tray will not let you use premium presentation mat or any of the photo settings when you're printing. So if you want to use one of those settings that puts down more ink at once, uh, that second tray is not going to do you any good. You're going to have to print everything from the top tray anyway. So that being said, everything else is exactly the same. So once you have your printer all set up, uh, it's working uh, with the stock cartridges and this could be an existing one too that you've been using for a while or you've had stuck in an attic or whatever and you decide you want to convert it to sublimation this is what you got to do okay I'm gonna move this back I'm not even gonna touch the printer yet because the first thing we need to do is fill up the ink cartridges okay um, some companies uh, sell them pre-filled, that's fine, you could skip this step. Um, I'm using Cosmos Ink, uh, that's what I use and what I recommend to everyone, um, <laughs> mostly because when I was looking for um, the ink that I wanted to use, because you really want to set up your, um, your sublimation setup with whatever ink you plan on using long term because switching out to a different ink is kind of a pain. If you're using cartridges, you have to use a syringe, pull all the ink out, clean them carefully, because um, you don't want to mix brands. Um, if you're using a CISS, that's even a bigger nightmare because you, you'd have to somehow pull the ink through the lines. Um, so I just trashed that whole operation and moved on with the refillable cartridges. But you want to use um, good quality ink and try to pick um, what you want to use long term 
I know some people will buy the, another reason why I don't recommend buying the already converted kits um, is sometimes they don't say what kind of ink is in them. And so if you wanna go and get refills, you run out of ink, um, it's, it's hard to find what they, what they put in it. <laughs> so you're using a consistent brand. Um, that also the ink that I had started with, um, I was looking for the absolute cheapest way to get a setup going. And I have found some ink that was pretty cheap on Amazon. Um, and the ink itself wasn't awful. Uh, my biggest, uh, setback with that is they only sold it in sets of four, all four colors. And so if you run out of black, which is most likely the color you're going to run out of first, uh, you're forced to go and buy all four colors again. And so chances are at the end of the year, you're gonna be out of black and you're gonna have four sets of all the colors that, that are left over because you don't use the colors as fast as the black. So uh, try to find an ink brand that you could buy just the color you need when you need it. Um, and the Cosmos ink does that. Um, the other thing that was an important factor for me was um, I do sublimation side by side with vinyl. Um, and a lot of people do. I'm sure I'm not the only one. You started doing shirts with heat transfer vinyl or you were doing decals and you wanted to expand into sublimation or whatever. Um, if you're starting with vinyl, chances are um, at some point you're going to want to do print and cut. And doing print and cut, so printing a design and cutting out around it um, and then pressing it on something, um, if you want to be able to do print and cut, you have to be able to print from your cutting software, which I have a Cameo. So the software that I wanted to be able to print out of was Silhouette Studio. And um, some inks require color profiles. And um, Silhouette Studio doesn't handle color profiles. In order to choose the color profile that you need to choose, um, at printing, in the print settings, uh, you have to use some graphics software or go into the back end. There is a weird workaround and I should make a video for it, um, but it's kind of confusing. But there is a way to change the profile if you want to print from a program that won't let you choose the profile. But it's, it's complicated and you don't want to be swapping back and forth because it'll just change it like forever to that profile. So um, I wanted something that didn't require a profile. And I know that that sounds bad, but um, it doesn't have to have a profile. So it, it not requiring a profile doesn't mean it doesn't use a profile. Um, what that means is that the ink has been calibrated and designed to work with Epson's stock profile. So it is using a profile. It's just using the profile that the printer is already going to use. So you don't have to choose a special profile, if that makes sense. So I wanted ink that I could buy the colors individually and that I could print from Silhouette Studio. Anyway, if, if you want something without a profile um, to be able to work in those programs, uh, the Cosmos ink works, works great for that. But I do know there are some other ones that don't require profiles. So now that I've chatted about that for way too long, we're gonna fill up these cartridges. So in this kit, this is Cosmos conversion kit. It comes with all four inks. You got the black, the cyan, the magenta, and the yellow. Your cartridges and a bag of syringes. And um, you just want to get everything out. And basically, all we're doing the super complex um, uh, process <laughs> is we're going to take the ink out of the bottles and we're going to squirt it into. The cartridges. So I'm, I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit better. All cartridges are going to have two plugs on them. There is a um, refill plug and there's an air vent. Um, right now it's not super vital on the air vent. We're just going to leave that. But the plug that's usually, they're all going to be a little bit different. So you're going to have to check with the manufacturer. But the plug that you refill it with is usually the one up front. The one on the back, and actually if you look at it, um, you can kind of see there's a chamber back there, and that's the little air chamber. Um, that could be a, an indicator if you're not sure which one's which, but the one on the back's the vent. We're not going to worry about that. If you're refilling and that vent is already out, because that vent needs to be out when it's in the printer, 
So if you're coming back to refill and that vents out, that's okay. You can just leave it out and refill it. So you're gonna open up the front plug and then you're going to get a syringe with this super scary needle and be careful because it is a very super scary needle. Um, take the little safety cover off. Take the corresponding ink color. So I have the magenta and the magenta. Um, if they've been sitting for a while, I usually just kind of gently shake them, but don't go crazy because you really don't want to make a bunch of bubbles because then that'll just make it harder for you to fill them up. But you pop the seal if it's the first time opening it. And all bottles will be a little bit different, but it's the same concept. Gotta open it. Holy cow, this thing's like... There we go. Um, the, these bottles have a little foil uh, seal on it, just leave that on um, and just poke right through it. I mean, you, you could pull it off if you want, but it's less risky that you're going to spill it. But just stab your needle right through the lid and just fill it up with ink as much as you can get in there. Um, you can almost fill the whole cartridge with the whole syringe. Um, I'm usually not quite that good and I have to put another little bit in there, but if you can get it nice and full, you can almost do the whole thing. Okay, juggling with my left hand. So you fill it with the, fill the syringe with the ink. You have your ink hole here. I tip it at an angle just to help reduce the bubble factor. And it makes it so you could fill it up higher. Oh, I got ink right on there, I didn't mean to do that. Um, you could fill it up a little higher. It's a little easier to not spill, basically. But you wanna fill it up as full as you can and just squeeze that in with the syringe. And don't go all, oops, now look at that, there we go. <laughs> um, don't go super fast, um, it's not a race. You'll see there's a little tiny compartment down here. Let's see, right. Yeah, honestly, it's hard to see in person, but there's a little tiny chamber down here in the front you want to you want to see that ink filling all that up. Oh, I should have put my camera closer. Okay, we're just gonna go all the way up until we feel like it's full. Now I just ran out, so I'm gonna put a little bit more, just because you you want to go ahead and fill it as much as you can while you're doing it. It'll just save you from having to fill a little sooner. And if you have too much in your syringe, you can squirt it right back into the bottle. It's, it's not scary. So almost full. I'm just going to put a little bit more in there. We're going to call that good. I have a little tiny bit extra in the syringe. I'm just going to push it back in the bottle. And then I'm going to put that cap back on. This cap you do want on. Um, the air vent. I will show you later, but we're going to take that out. But you got to make sure that you put this front one on, otherwise you're just going to start splashing ink all over. But that is how you fill them and refill them. Same concept. Um, I will note there's a little piece of plastic on the bottom here. My, my camera loves to not actually focus on what I'm doing unless I tap on it. Come on, focus. All right, well, there's a little piece of plastic down here. It looks like a little clear sticker. Oh, there, focused. <laughs> leave that alone. That's not something to peel off. You don't need to do that. Just leave it there. Um, the printer itself will pierce it when it's ready to start pulling ink down. So if you pull that off, you're gonna have a big mess inside the printer. So I'm gonna fill the rest of these up. I'm just gonna fast forward so you don't have to sit and watch me do it, but same concept. We're just gonna hold it at an angle, fill it up and put the lid back on. Okay, so on this black one, it's a double size. It's a lot bigger than the other ones. Um, it's still going to be the hole that's closest to the clip. 
just like the other ones. This back one is, is the air vent. So when you're refilling, you want to put it, I already took the lid off, but you want to, you want to refill in the hole that is closest to the clip. And obviously it's going to take more ink to fill this one up because it's bigger, but that's okay. You will appreciate the bigger one later. The more ink you take out, the more you're going to have to tip the bottle to the side. So this is why I say keep the foil on. You're less likely to spill it when it starts getting low. It's not getting low, but it's just getting lower than the length of this needle. So you're going to have to tip it to the side to continue to get ink out of it. So on this big black one, it's a little bit hard to see where you're actually getting full. When you, when you look at it from the top, you'll actually see the ink starting to, to touch the very top of it. That's, that's the easiest way that I could tell how full I'm getting it, is watch how close it gets to the hole up there on the top. Um, you really don't have to even fill it that full, but I like to fill them up as much as you can while you're doing it so you don't have to do it as often, obviously. And they're all filled. So the syringes, I just take them into the bathroom and I rinse them with water. And I, um, I actually save the box that they came in and I just keep it in my, my closet, my craft room. And I just put the little safety covers back on after I rinse them. Um, I disconnect the needle from the syringe so you can rinse that that well. Just rinse everything out, make sure the water runs clear so you know that they're clean. Put the safety caps back on, leave them open, like take the little plunger out so that I can dry well, and just leave them in, in a box or wherever um, until you need them again. And the, whatever water might be in there will dry out and, and it's fine. You don't have to use anything fancy to clean those. Water will work just fine. So I'm just going to push these aside and we're going to um, move on to the next step. Okay, so on to the fun part. So we already have all of the cartridges filled up with ink how they need to be. Uh, the ink plug and the air vent plug is still on them. So the first thing that you want to do is we're going to install them into the printer now. So I just go ahead and pull the plugs out. Like I said earlier, um, I don't even know where mine are. So I just, I keep the plugs out. You probably don't want to lose them in theory. <laughs> I could probably find mine. But in theory, if um, you're going out of town or something and you want to put those little plugs on just to kind of help keep things from drying out, you could do that. Um, that would probably be smart. But for the most part, if you're actively using it, you're, you're just gonna have those plugs out all the time. So I'm gonna take those plugs out just so I don't forget because they need to be out when they're in the printer. Um, what you want to do is we're going to go through the steps to refill or replace rather, to replace the cartridges. So on your main menu here, um, if you scroll over to the right, you're gonna see settings. You click on settings and then you go to maintenance and you go to ink cartridge replacement. When you click on that, it says replace the ink cartridges, start. It says lift the scanner unit and replace the ink, ink cartridges. When finished, close the scanner unit. So when you raise the, the scanner unit, the lid, it's gonna do this little dancing back and forth thing. Let it do the little dancing back and forth thing. And then it comes over here in a little docked position. If it doesn't do that, then, and you'll quickly discover this, this little door over here won't be able to open because it's going to get in the way of the, the edge of the printer over here. So you need to be able to open up this door in order to get in and take the cartridges out. So it needs to be able to do that little bouncy thing. And all you do is you stick your little finger behind the little thing, pull the clip up, it'll unsnap. And then each one of these cartridges, they look very similar to the ones we just refilled, but they each have a little um, tab at the top and you just get your finger under that tab, kind of rock the cartridge out. That tab unlocks it so that you can get it loose. So you have to push on that tab up here and just kind of rock it out 
you'll feel it start to come loose and you just pull it straight up. So these are the, the stock Epson cartridges here that we're not going to use. Same thing, we're just gonna rock it, pull them out. So now we're on to our refillable cartridges. You'll see there's a big, big gap for the black, just like the Epson was, was a bigger cartridge. And then your CMY here. And we're just going to slide them in. I can get it to line up, there we go. Push down, can you hear that click? You need to hear that click. Push down harder than you think you need to because if it doesn't get all the way down, especially that first time, you gotta kinda give it a good push because it's piercing that little that little um, plastic right there on the bottom. Um, we gotta get it all pushed in. So I'm going to do the cyan next because that's the next color. Push it, snap, okay. Magenta, push it in, snap. Yellow, push it in, snap. Take the lid, push it, snap. <laughs> there, that was the super complicated process of converting an Epson printer to sublimation. <laughs> now, I'm gonna close the lid and it's gonna do like a, a lot of, oh, focus. Um, it's gonna make a bunch of noises while it's like initializing the, the new cartridges. And we're gonna see if we have any issues. Um, sometimes uh, it likes to be uh, a little bit stubborn and it'll pop up and, and say, cannot recognize. If it does that, because it, it happens, go through the same process again. Like you're gonna, you have to go into the maintenance menu and say replace cartridges. So it'll unlock this little thing over here pull out whichever one it says isn't recognized. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and see if it gives me that error or not. Um, but if it doesn't give me the error, um, you just, you pop them out and back in until it does. Sometimes it takes a few times to, to read them right. Um, sometimes you, you don't have them quite pushed down hard enough to like really register. Um, so hopefully we don't have issues with that, but I know it happened, so I wanna make sure I said that regardless. Just, just keep trying. But let's close it and see if we have any problems. Okay, it says, please wait, do not turn the power off until initialization is complete. Okay, so it finished doing its little initializing thing, which took a few minutes. So I just turn off the camera. Um, and now it's popped up with replacement is complete. So we didn't have any errors. Um, sometimes it'll say these are not genuine Epson ink cartridges, press OK to continue. Um, if that pops up, press OK to continue. So I'm gonna hit OK. If it pops up anywhere and you see the ink levels, I just wanna say right now that those ink levels will never be accurate, so don't depend on those. Um, it, it might say they're all full, it might say some are getting low. Um, since these aren't genuine Epson cartridges, you're gonna have to actually look at them to know the status of your ink. So a little disclaimer there. Okay, so we got the refillable cartridges filled with the sublimation ink successfully installed in the printer. It said installation complete, it didn't give us any errors. So now what we need to do is do a print nozzle check um, just because I want to show you how it starts and, and the process we need to go here. Um, what we're trying to do is we need to flush out the original ink so that the only ink running through it is the sublimation ink and make sure it's all running smoothly before we actually print real prints. So first, a little um, overview of the printer itself. So like I said earlier, the, the 7710 has one tray and the 7720 has two. So this is the 10, so we've got one tray down here. This um, is, I wanted to show you this because this is a thing that is actually if you aren't shown it, it can be kind of hard to realize what it is. But the reason why the 7710 and the 7720 are so popular for sublimation is because they could print up to 13 by 19 inches. Um, I've actually heard that they could print rolls if you put it through the back feeder, but I haven't, I haven't dove into that. So um, that might be a thing. <laughs> 
Uh, so in order to get it full maximum size, um, you, you first pull the tray out and there's this little clear cover on it. Um, I'm going to be honest, I pulled that cover off and it's shoved in a corner of my craft room. It, it just always got in my way and annoyed me. Um, I'm not responsible for whatever complications that may cause, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to be a big deal. Um, but it just gets in my way. I don't use it. Um, but the tray itself, I'm going to sit down so I'm by the printer. The tray itself, um, you'll see all the measurements on the side. It'll tell you like line it up here for letter or three and a half or five. You can look at those little guides to light it up for the size paper that you're using. Um, but if you want to do bigger than what you could see right here, there's a little blue tab. See this little tab? If you press this tab, pull up here at the top, it extends out. So that's the magic trick to be able to do bigger prints. Jeez, I'm trying not to drop this thing. So for the 13 by 19, you're gonna push this all the way out, these top ones, and then this bottom guide, you're gonna push this all the way out. And then you can put the huge piece of paper in that spot. Now for this print head, nozzle check, head cleaning situation that we're gonna do, um, don't use sublimation paper for this because you don't need to. This is just use some scratch paper um, or regular copy paper, basically. So I'm gonna close this back down. I'm gonna grab some paper. And you drop it in here and then you just push in the little sides sorry I can't hold it up as well as I would like to say I'm Vanna White here and then you line up there's a little line down here that says LTR for letter this is just basic letter so you want to get it up to the lines for the eight and a half by eleven size and then you just slide it in notice the lids not on it it doesn't need that little lid <laughs> And then we could start with the whole print head cleaning thing. So um, once you load in paper, every single time you load in paper, this printer is going to ask you what you loaded. Now um, the default is letter, eight and a half by 11 um, plain paper. That's fine for what we're doing. Um, when you do start putting in real sublimation paper, you need to make sure that you've entered in the size correctly. Whoa, I'm gonna press some buttons. <laughs> and um, the paper type that you're going to want to print with. So like I said earlier, I use high quality plain paper. Um, I highly recommend getting some polyester fabric from Walmart. It's like $1.97 a yard in the fabric section um, and do some tests. Um, if you click through to other videos on my channel or go to debbiedoesdesignco.com, I've got some more videos and information on the importance of testing to see what works best for your ink um, and the differences in different, even, even the brand of sublimation paper you use can, can make a difference. So um, you really have to do some kind of trial and error testing to see what works for you. But once you do, you can't just change the paper on the on the computer. You need to have the paper changed here too and they have to match or it's going to give you an error. So for this we're just going to leave it at plain paper but um, if you want to do high quality plain paper whatever you're going to have to tell it here. Um, once you get all your settings figured out um, you can actually save them as presets which is pretty sweet. Then you don't have to go in and, and do things um, and choose all the settings again. And um, if you have like let's say a 13 by 19 piece of paper and you only end up using half of it. Um, all these paper sizes that you see in here, they're gonna be, as long as you install the drivers, they're going to be available paper sizes on the print menu when you go to choose your paper size to print something. You could take paper that, that you have extra, you didn't print on, and cut it down to one of those sizes and feed it through so you're using up scraps basically. So when I'm doing the, the tests, like a bunch of prints to try to figure out tests and stuff, um, I do three and a half by five and four by six a lot. Um, I just cut them down to that size. I have a little stack of them and I shove them in and run them through with the same image or color chart or whatever on it. So you don't have to use full sheets of sublimation paper every time. So just another little thought there. Um, so, okay, plain paper, letter size. 
we're going to go over here to um, settings. We're going to go to maintenance, print head nozzle check. It's the very first thing here. Um, I just want to, I mean, I can already tell you it's not going to be ready, <laughs> but I just want to print one to show you. I'm just going to hit print. It's going to print a, a little color chart thing. Okay, so um, the, the print head nozzle check thing, you're going to have to do that often. Um, I do that uh, before I print anything for the day, just to make sure that all my colors are running how they should. Sometimes if it's been a few days since you printed or um, you, you ran your ink out and you didn't realize it, I've done that a few times. You don't want to do that. Don't let it dry out. Um, it's always good to just do a little a little check to make sure everything's running good before you print six pages of something and then you realize later um, that, that you've got a problem. Um, the, the biggest thing with sublimation ink, sorry I'm ranting again but um, it's useful, um, the biggest thing with sublimation ink is that it's heat activated and um, I don't know if you noticed when we were filling those up like the yellow is, is kind of dingy, it's not a pretty yellow. Um, the colors won't look vivid on the paper. They won't look pretty and vivid until you press it. So if you print something and it looks awful, that's okay. Um, it will look awful. Um, that's actually good. <laughs> that means it's sublimation ink. If it looks pretty and, and like how it should on the screen, then um, that, would, that would raise some red flags. It's probably not sublimation ink. Um, so this is why I wanted to show you um, let's see if I can pull this up close and get it to actually focus. So the colors on here, the black is actually very black and the colors are pretty bright. And the if this was sublimation ink, um, they'd all be kind of dull and the black is the easiest tell because it's going to look more of like a dirty brown color. So make sure that you can see that. So you can compare. Nice, vivid black, bright colors. So what we need to do, even though those all printed nice, oh, come on, focus. Those lines all printed nice and clean, that's the goal, that's what we're going for. Um, that's not sublimation ink. We need to flush out the old ink so that those actually look kind of icky. <laughs> so it's saying, did it print okay, whatever. If you hit the little X, and you just hit all colors because it's prompting me for a print head cleaning and then you hit start or if you hit okay past that you can go back to the maintenance menu and hit print head cleaning but we need to do some print head cleanings um how many um it it totally just depends on 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 everything <laughs> the number of cleanings you might have to do to get it to actually flush out that ink um, is going to be different for everyone um, so you just have to kind of keep going. So we're going to let this go and see how it looks when we're done. Okay, so print head cleaning complete. Printing a nozzle check is recommended. Print the pattern, yes or no. We're going to hit yes. Oh, and actually, um, I reused this paper four times. It prints here. You can also print it here. Flip it over and print it there. And print it there. You might as well save some paper. So um, I usually take a pencil and just write number one next to the first one so you can keep track of what, what you're doing. Um, before I hit yes, I'm just gonna open this back up and put it in this way. Doesn't really matter, you just don't want it to print in the same spot. And then I'm gonna hit yes. Load letter and press start to print a nozzle check pattern. Hit start. We're gonna let it print and see how it looks. If you pull this out, then you won't drop paper everywhere. It doesn't matter here, but if it's somewhere else later, this little thing will pull out to your paper catcher. If you are doing a big 13 by 19, it'll pull way out, and then this will flip up, so it'll hold that paper sometimes. <laughs> I've still launched a lot of prints across my office. Um, okay. So it printed. We're starting to see some some little. Come on, camera. 
See there's some, some little jagged lines up here and, and the colors are all still pretty bright. So we're not ready yet. So I'm gonna do another print head cleaning. So on here, it says check the printed pattern and select the closer result. Um, that's not necessarily true for what we're doing because it is actually printing pretty decent. But we're trying to get that ink out. So I'm gonna hit the little X. I'm gonna hit all colors. I'm gonna hit start and let it do it again. Okay, I finished with another head cleaning. Print head cleaning complete, print a nozzle check. So I'm going to take our little sheet. I already wrote number two next to the last one we did. I'm just going to feed it in so that the blank parts are at the end because it prints at the top. Hit yes, hit start. There, we're starting to get some dingy colors. Now it's looking all, I'm gonna try this again. It's looking uh, pretty scattered now and that's okay. We're just working the, the old ink out and getting the new ink in. So here's print number one next to print number three. So the black you can see is just a little bit uh, more faded, but obviously that patchy, that's not great, but we're gonna keep going. We're, we gotta get those, those colors flowing and dull is the goal here. So I'm gonna do another printhead cleaning. We're on to number four. Okay guys, so earlier I told you about an error that sometimes pops up about not recognizing the ink cartridges. Well, um, this one's being stubborn, which I'm kind of glad it is, because then I can actually show you how to work around things, because um, it doesn't always go as planned. Um, but my 12th, 12th head cleaning that hasn't come out perfect yet, um, it popped up with this little error. Cannot recognize ink cartridge, try installing again. And if you see the color there, it's on the black. So the other three colors are okay, but the black is getting that error. So I, um, I told you that that happens sometimes and it's not anything to panic about. Um, you just have to fix it <laughs> and get it to get past that. So maintenance error, try installing again. I'm gonna hit okay. It says lift the scanner unit and replace the ink cartridge. When finished, close the scanner unit. So you just follow the prompts on the screen, open it up. It's gonna do a little dance like it did when we first switched out the cartridges. Um, let it do its little dance so you can get in there and, and pop that lid. But I'm just going to pull the black out and then, see it's out, and then push it right back in. Hear the click. Make sure it's pushed down nice and firm. Close the little cover again. Close the lid. And let it do its little thing. Sometimes you have to do it more than one time, um, but usually you pop it open and, and closed again. There. You have not installed, here, I'm going to lean you forward again. I'm gonna focus. It says, you have not installed genuine Epson ink cartridges. That's okay, we're gonna hit okay. The quality or reliability of non-genuine ink cartridges not guaranteed, blah, 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 blah. Just hit proceed. Continue using this ink? Yes. Replacement is complete, okay. Now, it didn't pop up again. So it decided it's going to cooperate and recognize the cartridges. But I am on, oh my God, all kinds of zoomed in, there we go. <laughs> I'm on print head cleaning number 12. Usually seven-ish, that's, that's kind of a, a normal number that I hear. Seven print head cleanings and your ink is good and flowing as it should. Sometimes it doesn't go that smoothly. And that's okay. Don't sit down and, and do 30 head cleanings in a row. <laughs> really, I normally wouldn't have gone to 12, but it was so close. Um, but the last, like even 11 and 9, 10, 11, 12, the last four, they've, they've all looked about the exact same. 
Like it's almost full, but there's just a few missing lines. So I'm just to the point where it's not making any progress. It's close and it's teasing me, but it's not getting better. So I'm gonna let it sit and chill and, and I will pop back in and get the camera rolling and let you know the status after it rests for a minute or a few hours or overnight. Okay guys, so I walked away and I ate some food and I took a little breather. Um, it was about an hour and 15 minutes. I came back, I did one more nozzle cleaning, um, print head cleaning, and I printed the nozzle check and it came out perfect. So if, if it's just being stubborn, come on, focus for me. Um, sometimes it's good to just give it a rest. And I, I honestly, I should have given it a rest at about eight or nine because there wasn't really any progress made after that. Um, but I'm trying to do this video and I wanted to make it happen right now. Um, but um, giving a little rest, let things kind of soak in a little bit is okay. Um, even overnight, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, if you compare these ones side by side, um, The top one is the last one we did. The bottom one is the very first one where it was still normal ink. So if you look at the text, that's where you could see it the most. The, the text up here is a lot more dingy. And down here it's nice and black and these colors are brighter. So this is what normal ink looks like and this is what sublimation ink looks like. So once you get all this flushed out, it should look like this. And obviously everywhere in between, <laughs> we have a bunch of crappy head cleanings, but that's just the process to get it to switch over. Um, but you only have to do that once and then it uh, won't be nearly as difficult for you from here on out. So once you get the ink running, the last thing you need to do with the printer is load in sublimation paper. Um, I just grabbed some for my other printer, use regular paper for this, but I'm going to throw that aside. I just wanted to show you. Um, sublimation paper typically has text. This is my favorite sublimation paper, by the way, A sub. Get it on Amazon. Um, sublimation paper, uh, that most of them have some text on the back. So you know that's the side that should be the back. So load it with the text facing up so that it's printing on the, the not printed side. So that's important. Only one side is meant to hold the ink. So make sure you load it in with the back facing up with the text and then you close it and you move on to the computer part. Um, I, I, have this, I have this a little bit backwards because I did all these setup videos um, for the computer parts and troubleshooting. Um, I've done a lot of those videos already. Um, I just didn't have a video on the actual um, converting process. So um, if you go through to my channel, I'll try to put a link in the description. There are uh, videos walking you through the settings for a Mac or a PC, uh, the best settings to use because there's some color settings you want to change um, just to make sure that it's printing as good as it can be printing. And like I said earlier, get yourself some fabric, do some test print and presses. Um, printing it alone is not a good indicator. As I've shown you, it's, it's dingy and faded. So you really have to press it to know what you're dealing with. But get some fabric to test with and, and print out some tests and try a few things and figure out what you like and then go from there. If you um, go a few days without printing, just you should be a pro at print head nozzle checks and cleanings now. So just do a little nozzle check and check on it. And usually if there's an issue, it's solved with just another print head cleaning or two. But um, I'll work on some videos for when it gets stubborn. Priming, priming is my, my backup plan for everything, but it works. So anyway, if I missed anything, you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or join the Facebook group. There should be a link in the description as well. Um, or I try to put as much info as I can on the website, debbiedoesdesignco.com. Thank you.